magic word Here in the secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Welcome to the Secret Kindergarten Show, where young children learn and grow. Young children learn and grow through play, and listening is one of those ways, so listen up and join me now. Listen anywhere. Listen anyhow. And I'm your host, Gino, as in G. No! One of the listeners out there... One of the listeners of Revolution Radio, the greatest radio station in the whole world. Well, his name's Boy Solomon. And he shared a story with me and I'm going to share it with you. Boy Solomon decided to keep some rats. Yes. (laughs) He found rats living in his old heat event trying to nest. So he's decided he's going to buy them a rat wheel some bedding, and a daily supply of their favorite foods. And there are three rats, but he's going to let the third rat loose outside in the forest, way away from coming back, because that rat does not seem to get along with the other two. He noticed that they tore up his underpants, (laughs) one of his socks, and they took plastic into their winter nest, which is in the which is, turns out to be in the old heat event. And they took in bread, rice, pasta, and his favorite garlic mashed potato mix. <laughs> oh my gosh, those rats, they are prepared. They are the original preppers. <laughs> and Boy Solomon used to have a pet hamster. And one day he saw a video of a, a rat owner and that inspired him to decide to hold on to those little rats. <laughs> Well, I'd love to hear, Boy Solomon, uh, any updates on that, and we'll share them here on the show. Mama's gonna rock you in her arms, in her arms, in her arms. Mama's gonna rock you in her arms. Pretty baby, you're surrounded in love. Daddy's gonna rock you in his arms. In his arms, in his arms Daddy's gonna rock you in his arms Pretty baby, you're surrounded in love Grandma's gonna rock you in her arms In her arms, in her arms Grandpa's gonna rock you in his arms Pretty baby, you're surrounded in love and he's gonna rock you gonna rock in her arms, in her arms, in her arms. Uncle's gonna rock Uncle's you gonna rock in his arms. Pretty baby, you're surrounded in love. Cousins gonna rock you in their arms, in their arms, in their arms. Cousins gonna rock you in their arms. Surrounded in love, family's gonna rock you in its arms, in its arms, in its arms. Family's gonna rock you in its arms. Pretty baby, you're surrounded in love. Pretty baby, you're surrounded in love. Pretty baby, you're surrounded in love. the mountain 
For now, I want to read you a story. Yes. And it was, uh, I will say, it was Thanksgiving recently. And this is for all the American listeners out there. This one's called George Washington and the Cherry Tree. When George Washington was a little boy, he lived on a farm in Virginia. His father taught him to ride, and he used to take young George about the farm with him, so that his son might learn how to take care of the fields and horses and cattle when he grew older. Mr. Washington had planted an orchard of fine fruit trees. There were apple trees, peach trees, pear trees, plum trees, and cherry trees. Once a particularly fine cherry tree was sent to him from across the ocean. Mr. Washington planted it on the edge of the orchard. He told everyone on the farm to watch it carefully, to see that it was not broken or hurt in any way. It grew well, and one spring it was covered with white blossoms. Mr. Washington was pleased to think that he would soon have cherry trees, uh, cherries from the little tree. Just about this time, George was given a shiny new hatchet. George took it and went about chopping sticks, hacking into the rails of fences and cutting whatever else he passed. At last he came to the edge of the orchard, and thinking only of how well his hatchet could cut, he chopped into the little cherry tree. The bark was soft and it cut so easily that George chopped the tree right down. And then he went on with his play. That evening, when Mr. Washington came from inspecting the farm, he sent his horse to the stable and walked down to the orchard to look at his cherry tree. He stood in amazement when he saw how it was cut. Who would have dared do such a thing? He asked everyone but no one could tell him anything about it. Just then, George passed by. George, his father called in an angry voice, 
Do you know who killed my cherry tree? This was a tough question, and George staggered under it for a moment, but quickly recovered. I cannot tell a lie, father, he said. I did it with my hatchet. Mr. Washington looked at George. The boy's face was white. But he looked straight into his father's eyes. Go into the house, son, Mr. Washington said sternly. George went into the library and waited for his father. He was very unhappy and very much ashamed. He knew he had been foolish and thoughtless, and that his father was right to be displeased. Soon, Mr. Washington came into the room. Come here, my boy, he said. George went over to his father. Mr. Washington looked at him long and steadily. Tell me, son, why did you cut the tree? I was playing, and I did not think, George stammered. And now the tree will die. We shall never have any cherries from it. But worse than that, you have failed to take care of the tree when I asked you to do so. George's head was bent, and his cheeks were red from shame. I am sorry, father, he said. Mr. Washington put his hand on the boy's shoulder. Look at me, he said. I am sorry to have lost my cherry tree, but I am glad that you were brave enough to tell me the truth. I would rather have you truthful and brave than to have a whole orchard full of the finest cherry trees. Never forget that, my son. George Washington never did forget. To the end of his life, he was just as brave and honourable as he was that day as a little boy. We're going to do an activity now! Okay. Let's see if we can tell... Let's see if you can tell when I'm telling the truth or when I'm lying. <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go. I'm going to tell you a fact. Or is it a fact? I'm going to tell you something and you're going to tell me if I'm telling the truth or if I'm lying. So is this the truth or is this a lie? The color of the sky is brown. Is that the truth? That's right, it's a lie! At least for now, the sky <laughs> the sky is still blue. Okay, here's the next one. Here's the next one. Are you ready? Pizza is absolutely disgusting. Is that the truth? That is an absolute lie. Pizza's the best food in the whole world. Get out of here. It's not disgusting. Okay, you ready for the next one? A duck goes quack, quack. Is that true? Or is that a lie? That's right. It's the truth. The plain and simple and beautiful truth. A duck goes quack, quack. All right. Okay, here's the next one. A horse goes Is that the truth? Or is that a lie? It's a lie! A cow goes moo! Okay, we got two more. What about this one? Did you know I went for a swim yesterday? 
I went for a swim in the toilet. Do you think I'm telling the truth? Of course I'm not telling the truth. That's a lie. I didn't go swimming in the toilet. Couldn't even fit in there. I tried. All right. Next one. Last one. Right now. I'm drinking a cup of coffee. What do you think? I'm telling the truth? Or am I lying? There's no reason for me to lie about that. Other than the fact that coffee is probably not the best drink for you. I am drinking a cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> well, you know what? I like that activity. I hope you did too. Let's listen to some music from Nancy Stewart of nancymusic.com. Things more. Let's go to the 
market. Let's go to the store. We can buy some broccoli and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the store. We can buy some cereal and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the store. We can buy some bananas and maybe a few things more. Let's go to the market. Let's go to the store. We can buy some orange juice and maybe a few things more. Gonna do another activity. Well, we're coming to the end of another half an hour of the secret kindergarten. And you know we like to do a little activity then. Okay. This one. <clears throat> this one's called Imaginary Hugs. So many of my friends, they don't even live near me. They live far, far away. And I want to give them an imaginary hug. And you can too. And this is a great one for all you young children out there to do. So you tell me. What does it feel like to hug somebody you care about? If someone you like, you'd like to hug them, and if they aren't in the same room with you, you can give them a, an imaginary hug anyway. So let's try it. So let's sit back, sit with our back straight and our bodies relaxed, and rest our hands gently on our knees. Now let's close our eyes and take a few breaths together. Imagine a peaceful place that you like to visit with your friends and family. Let me guess, it's the park, isn't it? Let's imagine that we're at a nice, lovely park. Just imagine you can feel, see and touch and hear everything going on in the park. Now let's send some nice wishes to ourselves. Let's think good things for ourselves. Give yourself a big hug. It actually, <laughs> it actually feels good to give yourself a big hug sometimes. It actually is. So everybody give yourself a big hug. <clears throat> and imagine you're having a nice time, having lots of fun in your favorite place. And let's say to ourselves, I hope I have a great day. I hope I have lots of fun playing with my friends. Do you have any other wishes? Any wishes? You just say them. Oh, we're giving yourself a big hug. Now we're going to give someone we love an imaginary hug. Put your arms in a big circle in front of you. And think of that person you like to hug and give them a big hug. And you can say something like, I want you to be happy and to have a great day. Give them a big hug and wish them well. Okay, is there anyone else you'd like to give a hug? Someone that's not there? Let's give them a big hug and say, I hope you're happy, and I hope you have a great day. What about a group hug? You gotta fit everybody in, reach right round. Give everybody a big group hug. I'm giving you a big hug. And that's the end of another half an hour of The Secret Kindergarten, bye!